So welcome to Tracy Mann Teaches and today I'm going to show you how to paint on chocolate. So last week I made a chocolate makeup kit and today I'm going to show you how to decorate it. So I'm going to show you all the equipment that you're going to need, all the systems that you're going to need in order to be able to paint successfully onto your chocolate mould and create a beautiful makeup kit that you're going to be able to put onto a cake. So here are all the pieces that we made last week, um, including a powder compact, an eyeshadow, a mascara, a perfume bottle and a little lipstick, all made out of white chocolate using a tempering method that I went through with you last week. So in order to paint chocolate, you're going to need cocoa butter. You can't do this with um, gel, so you need to do it with cocoa butter. So I'm going to now show you what that is and how to set it all up. So let's have a look at the systems that we can use in order to be able to do our cocoa butter painting. So we're going to need a heat source because cocoa butter is a solid product and we're going to need to melt it and keep it melted. So there's a couple of things that you need to know before you can get going. So you've got two options in order to be able to do this. The first one I've got here is by using a glass bowl. So just a glass bowl at home, just nice and shallow, which you fill with boiling water. Then you would take hold of a plate and pop that on top like so and the heat from here will come up, make the plate warm, pop your cocoa butter on top and it will melt. So that's option number one. That's a good one to get going to see if you like it or not. And then option two is what I use, which is one of these, which is a chrome food warmer. I'm going to just tip that so you can see it. OK, so that's what that looks like. It's called a chrome food warmer. I picked one up off Amazon for about £10, something like that. So this is a tea light in the middle and it's a constant heat source. So because it's a constant heat source, the metal paint palette, not plastic, uh, that sits on top will then stay hot. The cocoa butter will then stay melted and then I can keep painting and keep painting and keep painting. So cocoa butter is available in lots of different forms, but we're going to use it today in button form. So little callet buttons there like that. You don't need a huge amount of this to be able to do your painting. You just need a few buttons to do it, which will become apparent when I start painting your little chocolate pieces. You're going to need some dusting colours. So the colours of dust that you can use are your choice. It doesn't particularly matter what brand they are. Anything you've got is fine. The luster dusts will paint differently from the matte colours. So just be aware of that. And again, I'll point that out when I start painting I will be showing you some examples of that and then the design is yours so you can then choose to do exactly what you want on your makeup kit to coordinate it with your cake that you've done and just create something amazing using the painting technique that I'm about to show you you need paint brushes as well very important so I have three brushes sometimes four um, depending what I'm doing that I keep separately from everything else so I don't use these for dusting or anything else and they are my cake painting brushes they start with a brush that's very very fine up to a brush that's just a little bit thicker and these are what I use for my cake painting so let's start getting the system set up so first thing I'm going to do is light the little tea light in the middle and pop my paint palette on top. Now I've already put in my white dusting colour and I've got a luster pink colour there. And I'm just going to take hold of my cocoa butter and I'm just going to put a few calyx on this side and a few on the other. So I've got about, I don't know, 10 or so in total, something like that. So this big bag does go an awful long way. Then I'm going to take the other colours I've selected. So I've got um, grape violet. So I'm just going to pop a little bit of that on there. And does tend to go absolutely everywhere. A little bit of green. This is woodland green, if anybody wants to know specifically what it is. And I've got a rose colour. That's actually a pearlescent pink colour. Um, one of the PME ones. And this is called rose. And a bit of spring green as well. So a lighter green colour as well. May add in a few more colours later on, but that's our starting point. And then if you look very carefully, you can already see the cocoa butter started to melt. So it melts really, really quickly. And once it's fully melted, we can then start painting. So before we start painting the makeup, let's have a look at painting consistencies so we can understand exactly what it is that the paint's trying to do. So the first thing we're going to do is dip our paintbrush into the cocoa butter and I'm going to grab, let's go for a bit of this purple so then you can see it on the camera. So we'll grab a bit of this scrape violet colour and we'll mix a bit up so we've got lots of cocoa butter and not very much colour so not a lot of dusting colour and if I paint this on this bit of dried sugar paste here you're going to see that the colour is quite translucent. OK 
okay paint's okay but it's quite translucent in color so let's do that again and dip the paintbrush in and remove some of the cocoa butter grab some more dust and mix up the color again so we've got less cocoa butter this time more dusting color so if i put that next to that you're going to see a change already in terms of this shading so all i'm doing is adjusting the cocoa butter so let's do it once more dip that in there this time i'm going to just take off as much of the cocoa butter as i am grab some of the dust and mix that up like so and then if I paint next to this one, you're going to see a really big difference between all three of them. And that's just been achieved by literally changing the amount of cocoa butter versus dusting colour. And you get that range of coverage. So now we've done that, let's get our brush cleaned and ready. So what you need is a piece of kitchen roll, kitchen paper, pop your brush into the cocoa butter and then just twist it onto the kitchen roll. So I don't go and clean my brush in between every single item I paint. I just dip my brush into the cocoa butter and keep going until there's nothing left. So there we go. My brush is all nice and clean now, ready to go. So this brush I have got here is brush number two. I have got four brushes to use today, starting at zero, number one, number two, and number three. And these are the brushes. They're going to vary according to what it is that I'm going to cover. So if I need to cover a bigger area, then I'll be using the brush number three. So for this particular design, I'm going to paint some little flowers onto the compact. So I've moved my camera down a bit so you can see a bit closer and I'm going to start doing some painting. So the first thing I'm going to do is put on some of my um, central flowers. So I'm going to go for the rose colour. So grab some cocoa butter and some of the rose dusting colour, but I'm going to mix some white in because it is quite a strong colour and I don't want it to be really, really strong. Although you need to see it on camera, we still need it to be relatively subtle plus we can use that color then later on for some more detail if we've got a darker color there on the same palette so pop some white in to start with and then all i'm going to do is paint a flower i'm going to paint lots of these little flowers but i'm just going to start at the very beginning here so all i'm going to do i'm going to start in this corner the idea is to create something that's going to go round like that so i'm literally just going to paint a little petal like that now whenever i teach this i always say to my students just try and imagine somebody's doing like a star jump where they're jumping in the air with their arms and legs outside because then it helps you to place your petals better knowing that you're not going to be going out this way and then you've only got room for one at the bottom so your next two petals if you were looking at a clock would be going at pointing towards two o'clock and ten o'clock so that then helps you to get the petals into the right place like so okay doesn't matter if you don't get a complete coverage to start with all we're doing at the moment is just popping our paint down and then the two at the bottom on our star jump here would be equivalent of four o'clock and eight o'clock and so we'll just pop those in there like so there we go take that bit of lump of dusting colour in the middle and just remove that and then we can leave that to dry so that's my first flower I want to now paint some more going up there so I can do them in different sizes I can stand them apart or I can overlap them so for the moment we're just going to do a slightly smaller one next to it using the same technique that we've just done and if we 
happen to come anywhere near another flower, we're just going to paint either under it or over it as if it was there anyway. So we're just going to... So I'm using the, um, the matte colour pink, so the rose colour at the moment. I'm not using the luster at this stage. So I've got two fairly big ones there at the moment. I'm going to do one more of similar size before then I start to reduce the size of the flower. So I'm going to back this one up a little bit more towards the other flowers that are here. Like so, so it's fairly quick. And then I'm going to start to reduce the flowers and leaving gaps so that I can then start to paint other colours and different flowers. So let's continue. So I'm going to do another little one going up here now. So I'm going to make them smaller now deliberately. Like that. And another little tiny one up here just to kind of take the colour through the whole thing. So they get quite small at the end. So I want it to kind of curl all the way around the compact. So let's do one more set down here there we go and then one more on the end like that i've left, left gaps because obviously i want to put in other colors but i've laid out then my sort of pink design that i want to do on the side of this compact so while those are drying, we we'll move on to something else. So we're going to get our grape violet colour that we were using earlier and we're going to tone it down because the purple colour is way too strong and a nice lilac colour would be much better, a lavender type colour. So we're going for an overall look of sort of pink and lilac. So I'm going to take some of the white and just mix that in so we achieve something soft. That's what we're looking for. Something that we can then paint alongside the pink colour. So we can do similar flowers, we don't have to do anything particularly different, we can keep it nice and straightforward, but the combination of flowers in terms of colour will then start to sort of stand out, make it look really pretty. So we're going to start on this side with our little lilac colour, and again I'm going to make these more delicate, so much smaller. Similar pattern, hopefully you can see this just about. I'm just going to tuck in some small versions of these in the lilac colour. We'll put one over there as well. So we'll just spread them out so it doesn't matter if they're close to the pink ones. That's fine. So they're fairly quick to do. You don't need to spend too much time on them. Put another one in about there. And you can space them wherever you want to put them. You, you can put them wherever you've got a gap but I'm keeping them fairly small. And you want a general spread so that you end up with the colour coming through the whole thing rather than sort of being restricted to one place. Like so. And then finally, again, we'll put another one about there. Just don't particularly want them all in a row you do want them kind of spread out a bit in fact what we'll do is we'll put an extra one in here look just a little one keep them small and then they're kind of tucked in there now we could just put a petal in there to give a hint that there is one under there as well just so we've got the color kind of trailing through the whole thing so while the flowers are drying, I'm going to paint the word compact, which is actually already written on there for me. So I've got some black and my zero brush. Now what I'm going to do is actually add a little bit of white because the black is very harsh and I don't as I want it to be quite as dark as that. So I'm going to make it a dark grey colour. So again, just mix that round, Let me just turn it around so you can see it. So I've just added in a little bit of white. There's the black, there's the colour. I can always add to colour, it's much easier to add than it is to take away. So we're going for a dark colour and my zero brush. And then all I'm going to do is just follow the letters that are on top of this compact, like so. Keep them nice and fine. But they're all there for you, so you don't need to make this up. And I'm going to make my way across the whole compact, just painting in the numbers or the letters, I should say, not the numbers, um, just like that, this grey colour. 
Now I'm going to show you a little tip here. If you accidentally put on too much colour in one particular place and you want to take it off, if you get yourself a scriber, you can literally just scratch it off like so. Very, very straightforward. So you don't need to start getting out any extra paint brushes or anything else. You can literally just take the chocolate and just scratch off anything that you've made a mistake with. So let's go back to our design and we're now going to do some leaves. So I've got brush gone back to brush number two. I'm going to get some of this spring green colour and I'm actually just going to add in a little bit of woodland green. So I'm just going to mix these two colours together. Woodland's too dark, spring is a bit too vibrant. So I mix these two together and it gets quite a nice green colour. Tiny bit more. This tones them down a bit. And then all I'm going to do, again, a similar shape to what I've done before, is literally just take my brush and I'm just going to pop some little leaves just amongst the design so there we go like so like that again you can put another one just sort of there as well just trail it off like that so you can put as many in as you like let's go down here i just like to start, kind of tuck them in to start with see what it looks like and then go from there another one there. Go. Okay. Just add that one in there like that. Something like that. So there we go. As long as we've got a general colour going through the whole thing, that's fine. You can always do them in, you can do a sort of longer one at the top here if you wanted to. Kind of looks like it's trailing a bit like that. So you can always again just add in an extra one down here. So just pop in. Most of this needs to be in threes when it comes, they're either single or in threes. Okay. There you go. So that gives you the kind of So you can add in little extra ones where you want to. You can just keep going with this. Just keep putting in your colours where you like them to be. Don't overwhelm it with the green. The green is just meant to sort of kind of back up the flowers, which we're now going to go back to and have another look at. So we're going to do some detail now on the flower. I've just done one already to kind of show you where we're aiming for. So what we're going to do at the moment, they look quite flat. I'm going to make them look a bit more 3D. So I've got some of the rose colour here. So you remember earlier we mixed it up with white. Now we're just going to use it on its own. So I've mixed some colour up here and we're going to just take whichever petal it is we decide to go for. So let's go for Let's go for one that we can see completely. So we'll go for this one here. I'm just going to run a little line down the side of it and then we're just going to take another brush and just gently fade it in so we don't end up with a too much of a line going on. So let me just show you that again. So it's a little bit like um, brush embroidery. If anybody does royal icing, they'll know what I mean. And it's just creating it to make it look a little bit more 3D. So we'll just pop a line down there and then just use a dry brush just to fade it through. So I'm using brush number two and brush number one just to do the, the detail. We're trying not to achieve a line, we're just trying to achieve some shading here. So that's what's happening at the moment and make sure these petals um, stand out alone. There we go, like so. And again, just follow it round. I tend to just do one side of the petal. So you don't need to do both. And then obviously if it goes underneath another flower, you can only do so much or as much as you can see. But the key to this is making sure you blend this so that it stands out like that. You can do a don't want to do them all at the same time you can do a couple at the same time i'm just doing two just to kind of speed it up a bit and then i'm just going to carry on doing the other ones so you can see the difference that it makes um, by doing this extra bit of covering on that side it really makes it much more impactful and stands out from everything else that um, is going on so we're going to do very similar with the um, lilac -y color so we're going to make that a little bit darker we're not going to go full strength because this is actually quite a strong color we don't want it to stand out too much so we're not going to go for 
just grape violet on its own. We are going to add a little bit of um, white in there. And again, similar to what we've just done, just take it, just do a little tiny bit and just pull your colour through. So we're just focusing on one side of each petal. It doesn't actually matter particularly which side. And then just using a dry brush just to kind of blend it all through. You'll suddenly see these start to pop a bit more. They'll stand out. Because these are so small, you can actually do quite a few at the same time. But I'm quite happy just to do them individually. But if you were doing this at speed, then you could do, could do them a few more at a time. So you can see already there's quite nice development there on pattern. So I'm just coming up to the last one on here, like so. Again, just blend it all through and turn it back round and you'll see just how much difference it makes just to use a couple of different shades. So I'm now going to mix up some white, which I'm going to use for the centre of my flowers. So I need this to be quite thick. So you remember what we said at the start about ratios of cocoa butter to dusting colour. So I need a lot of dust in here. And I'm going to just kind of twist my brush so I get it round, right down to a point. And then I'm just going to go into the centre of my flowers, all of them, just like so. You'll see it picks them up immediately. There you go. Now you can paint whatever colours you like. So you might fancy doing yellow centres maybe, something like that. There we go. Okay. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the same colour again and I'm going to paint some little tiny dots. So a bit like um, Gypsophilia or Baby's Breath, um, that's what it's called. And just pop these around the arrangement, even in the middle there, just little few little dots. Again, you can switch over to the other brush if you want it to be even finer. Just fill it in, it just makes it look much um, finer, I suppose. You can just do as many or as few as you like of these. I'm going to try and spread them a little bit beyond the, the actual curve of the flowers so it doesn't end up being too set, so it doesn't end up being too structured. So you can take this out a bit further. There you go. Finally, I'm just going to go back into the leaves again. So I've got my green mix from earlier. There we go. All I'm going to do is just add a tiny bit of woodland green, just darken it down a little bit more, not too dark. And I'm going to do the same as what I've done with the leaves. So I'm literally just going to clip the side of them like so. Some I might need to sort of blend in like we did with the others. Others may just be okay as they are. Just see how it looks. I think these actually are okay, just benefiting from having the line down there but you can always blend them if you're not very happy with them so just down one side again it just makes them look a little bit more 3d there we go
So that's our compact finish. So let's now move on and have a look at the perfume bottle. So with the perfume bottle, we've got some slightly different ideas with this. We can paint the same pattern in the middle so it all looks like it belongs to the same set. So in that case, I'm just gonna follow that through with the same as what I've just done there. But let's have a look at the stopper up here and show you what um, happens when you paint with luster. So for the stopper on my perfume bottle, I have got some gold luster color here. So this is a PME one. And all I'm gonna do is just mix my cocoa butter in with the luster color, like so. So it's quite nice and thick. I've got my brush number three that I'm using for this particular bit. And I'm then just gonna go in there and start painting. So the coverage on lusters is really good on chocolate. And this is a nice gold colour because it's on the same, because it's sort of a yellowy colour as well and the chocolate's a yellowy colour. It does cover really, really well. Same amount of drying time as everything else. So one to two minutes in normal sort of temperatures, with normal temperatures like UK temperatures. Um, if you're in a hotter country, you might just need to pop it in the fridge just to set it all off. Then just... Literally go around it like that. It's very easy. The coverage is amazing. Very, very quick. If you wanted to make it even darker, you could then go over it again, let it dry, and just go over the, the perfume bottle again. So I'm now replicating the pattern exactly the same way as I did on the compact because I want it all to match so it looks like it's all part of a set obviously I've done a much more scaled down version this time but I'm following it exactly as I did before so I've painted the flowers in the pale pink and I'm just going back now and just adding a few highlights so I finished replicating the pattern now so there we go we've got two so far as part of our set and then we're going to move on now to the eyeshadow. So we've got these two big areas here to paint and for that I'm going to be using the luster colour again. So this time I've gone for a pink luster colour. I'm going to take a larger brush, dip it into the colour and mix it up. Now you do need a fair amount of the powder to be able to get a reasonable coverage with this. So just keep mixing. I find it just mix quite quickly. And we're going to go for a sparkly colour as one of our colours here. So all I'm going to do is take my brush and the joy of the luster colour is it actually then looks like eyeshadow because uh, a lot of the eyeshadows are quite sort of sparkly, not just flat matte. So the, the lusters are what you want to be using to do this little bit here. Let's turn that around and then you can just take it round that side until it's completely covered. It should cover in one go and then just leave it to dry. So to keep things consistent with my colour scheme, I'm gonna take the gold, but I'm not gonna use it in the neat colour that I use to cover the bottle top. I'm gonna to grab some white and tone it down a bit so I can then paint the other side with the pink. So, we're staying, so we've got a nice sort of a creamy colour here, but it's all kind of on the same I might make it a little bit darker, just add a bit more in. Then just paint that in like so. It's got a bit of a shimmer about it because it's got some of the gold in it, which is what we want. Now you could, if you wanted to, paint some flowers around the outside edge of this if you wanted it kind of to all tie together. I think because I've got the colours in there, I probably don't need to do that, so I probably will resist doing it on this particular thing. And um, we'll move on now and have a look at the mascara. So with the mascara, similar to the chocolate uh, perfume bottle, I'm just going to paint the lid with this gold colour. I haven't added any white to it. This is just a neat gold colour. So I'm just going to paint a layer of that on first. Remember, lots of dust versus cocoa butter. Don't worry too much about the join because I suspect it will probably be around the back of your cake somewhere. So don't worry too much about that. If you want to spend a bit more time getting that join flawless, you can. Not too worried about it at the moment. So again, just take your 
take your brush with your luster colour just paint, don't forget the top and just paint over the whole thing and then just let it dry. There you go. You'll see the difference in colour just by looking at the bottom of the mascara. You can already see the difference. So it's all very subtle and very, very soft. There we go. So similar to the compact, it does have a word on it. And the word is mascara and I'm using a grey colour again this time, so not black. Try and stay away from black. Put a bit of white in with your black just to tone it down a bit. Now, the only word of warning with this, if you're holding this and your hands are hot, you may end up melting it. So if you find that you are someone who has got quite warm hands, either prop it up or get yourself some cotton gloves uh, and then you can hold on to it without then melting the whole thing. So just remember it is chocolate. So I've just finished painting the mascara. I've also added just a little flower in the corner there, just so it kind of goes with everything else that I've done. I think I'm going to end up having to do something on here as well. It's almost irresistible. Just a little tiny flower maybe in each corner, just so that it all matches. So to paint the lipstick, I've taken some of the gold luster colour that I used on the lid of the perfume bottle and I've just painted round the base of the lipstick. And then I've just taken some of the pink luster colour that we used on the palette for the eyeshadow and just painted that on the lipstick so you can pick whatever colours you like um, try not to hold them while they're drying just kind of leave them on your board and there we go we have our lipstick and there we have a complete set of hand painted chocolate makeup so you can use whatever you like co coordinate to your cake pick whatever colours you like and then you've got a completely unique set of makeup. So thank you very much for joining me for this lesson. I hope you've enjoyed it and learned lots about how to paint onto chocolate. So on the next lesson, I'm going to be showing you how to make some flowers out of chocolate paste. So do please join me there. In the meantime, take care. Have a look at my website if you need any more information, which is www.tracescakes.co.uk. And I'll see you next time.